Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. This is going to be uh, some questions that some of our viewers have emailed me. And I'm always really happy to get questions, you know, because it means people are paying attention. Uh, they're taking it seriously. They're actually trying to implement the teaching. And of course, that's how you get the benefits. So uh, it's in everyone's interest to clear up any questions that you have, either by posting them in the comments or just send me an email. And of course, I will protect your anonymity. So the first question is from RJ, uh, my old friend. <laughs> and, uh, we were talking the other day and he's, I was telling him my experiences and he says, wow, that's interesting, but you know, how do you do it? How do you do it? And this is one of the most frequent questions that I get asked. It doesn't occur to me that it's very difficult to put this teaching into action. But then I have training in physics and for many years I was uh, a troubleshooting field service technician. Later on, I became a self-taught uh, software and hardware engineer, digital logic engineer. So uh, I was designing computer parts and stuff like this. It was never a problem for me to put theory into action, but I guess for people who don't have training or background in engineering, it could be a problem, you know? So, okay, let me tell you my story as quickly as possible because I don't really know about anybody else. I only know about myself. So it's only been about three months since I contacted Ramana's teaching, but those have been a really intense, really fast three months. In December, I was feeling sick. I had a fever and I just couldn't get rid of it. And finally, in desperation, I went to see an astrologer he turned out to be a really excellent astrologer, a Brahmana, a temple devotee, temple priest. And I gave him my chart. And, you know, I, I play around with astrology a little bit, too. So we were talking about how when you read someone's chart, sometimes you go into a trance and suddenly you can see like right through their chart and see their lives. And you can almost just reach right in and touch it and understand exactly what's going on. So he was reading my chart and I saw him go into this trance and he starts to tell me, you have very good fortune. You're up for liberation. You should go to a different place. You're in the wrong place. You should be in a fireplace, a mountain place. And right away I said, Tiruvannamalai. <laughs> He said, yes, yes, that would be perfect. I had been thinking of coming to uh, Ramana's place, but various things kept me away from it, uh, made me doubtful, this and that. But then when I got this news, I said, okay, I'm really going to do it. So he said, be ready to give up everything. Be ready to lose everything whatever it takes, because that's what moksha means. That's what liberation means. So I came here and at first I started chanting Gayatri. And that whole Gayatri series that I did recently came from that experience. I did a deep study on Gayatri and I was also practicing it, chanting as far as possible, 24 hours a day, from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep at night. And so that led to some very interesting experiences, which I'm not going to go into too much detail on, but just let me say that Gayatri is like a fountainhead of bliss. It's a really beautiful mantra. So once Gayatri had purified my mind to a certain degree, I got very interested in Ramana's practice of uh, vicharana, self-inquiry. Self-inquiry means 
looking into who am I, what am I, not verbally, not intellectually, but experientially. So I began to do this practice and trying to make a long story short here. At first, I had to do it on the verbal level. Most people do, I think. But then gradually it began to open up into an experiential. And I begin to glimpse a landscape of the silent mind, where the mind would just stop. And at first it took an effort of will. And that became like a strain. I started getting feeling of tension in my head as if I was almost going to get a headache or something like that. I said, no, wait a minute, I'm trying too hard. So I backed off from that. And then I remembered something that uh, Ramana said, that there are three stages of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And that samadhi is like deep sleep plus awareness. So I started trying to access this state of deep sleep, shushupta. And at first, I started sleeping a lot, <laughs> but I was going into meditation, deep meditation, I mean nirvikalpa samadhi, and then going to sleep from that and then waking up in it again and meditating some more. So sometimes I would wake up two or three times at night and just be in deep meditation, no senses, no thoughts. Uh, and uh, but it was still an effort of will and uh, finally I'm not sure exactly what happened but I mentioned in one of the last videos that I had kind of a mini death experience uh, my heart rate and blood pressure started going up and I was feeling really weird <laughs> but I wasn't worried at all there was no fear in fact, there was a kind of excitement, like, oh, wow, something new is happening. What's this, what's this going to be? I, I, so I did what any intrepid adventurer would do. I took a nap. <laughs> and when I woke up from the nap, something was different. And I'm not going to make any big claims, but it, definitely something had died. Since then, I noticed specifically, I haven't had any fear at all. Not even fear of death or anything. It's been really wonderful. And then this experience of I, I became accessible to me. And I started experiencing that on a regular basis. And I found it possible to stop thinking stop the mind from chattering simply by meditating on I, I. And I went over that in the last video, uh, how to do that. And it's by changing our self-concept from the ego to pure awareness. As long as the mind exists at all, uh, like Rabu Gita says, as long as there's even a little of the mind, it'll become everything. Because as soon as duality occurs, then there's duality, right? <laughs> so all the stuff that comes along with it, too. But then when actual non-duality is achieved, experienced, uh, these are all the wrong words, because they all refer to dualistic states. Known? No, nothing. Dang it. <laughs> When you become I, I, <laughs> not even I am, just I, I, then the experience of the self is there. And it's not an experience in terms of subject and object. Our language is just, it makes it so hard to express these things. But it's simply being, a state of being, I, I, the real self. So that leads us to our second question 
from Rick, R-E, uh, you know who you are. <laughs> he says, I've been practicing Ramana's teaching for a couple of years. And I think I had an experience of the self, but I'm not certain. How can I verify it? Well, my answer to him is, if you are really the self, uh, and you are the self, <laughs> you are nothing but the self, you know when you have an authentic, valid experience, you know. Uh, nobody has to tell you. You don't have to go to some authority figure, uh, to some official uh, to verify your experience, you know, you know whether it's real or not. And so I just want to say, for those who haven't got to that point, that knowing the self or being the self is not an experience. Uh, in an experience, there is an experiencer, and then there's something that you experience. But that's not the case with being the self, because in being the self, there is no body, there's no ego, no mind, no experiencer, and there's no object to be experienced. I, I means the self, the self being the self. So you can't really see yourself. It's not like you see a light or a glowing figure in the air or something like this. That's all mind stuff. But when you are in the self, you experience being I, the real self, the unconditioned self, pure awareness, without an object. And this has to be experienced to be understood. And it's a matter, it's not a matter of practice either. It's not like you can practice being I, I. You simply have to be I, I based on your own understanding and realization of this teaching. So when you become I, I, or not become, when you are being I, I, you are perfectly aware of what's going on. And you know yourself that it's a genuine experience. You don't need anyone to validate it. But if you want, you can read in Ramana's teachings many, many descriptions of this state. And you check it yourself. Was it a real experience? Or was it Memorex? <laughs> no, it was it a real experience or was it something that you projected from your mind? Huh? You have to be honest with yourself. Nobody can tell you because you can go and tell your story to somebody and who knows, maybe it's in their interest or they feel it's in their interest to tell you it was real or it wasn't real, depending on what they want to know, what they want to see, what they want to hear. So ultimately, you are the self, you are Brahman, you are the knower, huh? you know. You see. So verify it yourself. So that's all I have to say about these questions. Thank you very much. These are great questions. Keep them coming. <laughs> and I'll do my best to uh, help you understand this great teaching of Ramana. So Om Tatsat Om Harihi Om.